Hey everyone, I'm back for a little bit of mm, reflection on some things that have been coming up in the community. So I wanted to start today with an invitation to come close and listen, like deeply listen. So in the Jewish tradition, we have the Shema, hero Israel, like hear, listen, come hear those who wrestle with the divine. And that's my intention for this um, reflection today is we are in a time where we deeply need integration. We deeply need presence. We deeply need engagement and intimacy within our shared experience. And here's what I mean about that. We have been in a time of information overload. Lots of different traditions have different names for this. None of that matters. All that matters in the big picture is we have access to all the information. It's just flowing at us. Distraction, noise, media, podcasts, social, you know, so much information. And part of what we're doing here in the Lola community is pulling back. Sorry, there's lawnmower. Can you hear that real life? <laughs> um, pulling back to hone, to prune, and to move into a new dynamic relationship, mm, not new, evolved dynamic relationship of engagement and responsibility. And what I mean by that is no longer do we, do I want to be in communities or in large groups where there's just more information, but rather deep integration, questioning, engagement, and dynamic relationship so that we can bring to life the difficulties, the challenges, the realities of daily life. That we don't just keep reading more books, or we don't just keep listening to more podcasts, that we engage deeply with each other. And so our community is changing and shifting in that way. And it's an experiment. I believe that we are ready to be in the integrated state, to be witnessing each other and listening to stories and being present, but that we are not just consuming, that we are also creating, that you are creating your song, dance, art, food, garden, that you're sharing your creations with the world. I'm creating and we're doing that together in this give and receive energetic dynamic. And so it's not, I'm like the guru or the teacher and I just give out information and then you just consume it and take it and, and then do that with someone else or something else that there's really much more, you know, I think it means less. It means less engagement externally. It means doing less, talking less, thinking less, buying less and going deeper. And this aligns beautifully, beautifully with the Jewish calendar, because every seven years, there's a Shemitah year, which is a sabbatical year, a rest year, where we rest the land, where we let the land rest. We don't um, crop harvest. We don't work with the land, tend the land, that we let it rest while we rest. And that we forgive debt, that we practice forgiveness and healing. And that is what my intention is towards this year of Shemitah is pruning, is gathering energy, um, wisdom, community. I made a list, it's over on my altar, of the things for Shemitah year that I really want to 
align with and attune to. And there are things like using what I already have. So using books, using candles, using food, using clothes, using, you know, like using the wisdom, going back through some of the classes that I've taken the past few years that have been profoundly transformational um, in so many ways. So I put on my Shemitah list and my intentions for this year to really pull back, like what would a sabbatical look like given your responsibilities, given your life? Um, and how does it feel? Like, what does it push on in your nervous system to think of pulling back or taking a sabbatical in some way? Like what kind of fear arises when we slow down in that way? And so I think this alignment of not just consuming, of being in deep engaged relationship, of really thinking about, um, integration over information and noticing what comes up. What, uh, is there action? Is there restlessness? Is there fear? You know, what arises within this container, within this space? And part of the, one of the other Shemitah practices that I have is, um, is, go, is around language and communication. So I've been noticing a lot of micro codependency, um, which means it's not like a big, huge managing other people's emotions or <clears throat> being afraid of, of someone's response, but more um, little ways in which I don't say what I really wanna say because I don't wanna hurt the other person and, or I don't want them to respond the way I think they're going to respond. So part of my Shemitah practice, my rest, my alignment, my coherence, my sabbatical, um, that I'm defining the way I want to, and I encourage you to do the same is to notice the micro codependencies and start to with compassion and clarity and love be very clear about what I do think, desire, long, want. And there's all of these micro ways that I've been doing that. And so, um, for example, it might be a Sunday night and our family will say, oh, what are we going to have for dinner? And, or we'll order or something. And I'll just say, I don't care. I don't know. Or um, whatever you guys want is I just kind of um, don't really ask myself. I just allow them because I don't want to deal with arguments. I don't want to deal with, um, you know, maybe my husband wants something and he's not saying it. And so then if I say it, it'll take away. I mean, just all this mind chatter. And so what I've been doing is really just getting quiet and listening. And then I'll say, um, I want this or, or for example, my husband suggested a place last week and I said, no, I don't want that. So it's very little. It will be very unique to your own life. But what are the ways in which you may or may not listen to your own heart or your own alignment or your own desires based on other people's outcomes? I'm actually really curious if I don't say any more about it to see kind of what comes up for you. Um, in your own life, if you just start noticing, um, you know, we did the Martha Beck way of integrity over the summer. And this speaks a lot to that. Like, how do we speak fully into our truth um, of our experience and stop lying to ourselves and to other people? And I really layer that with um, a lot of the codependency tendencies that so many of us have and not in a big capital way, but in a really small micro way. So that's one of the things I'm really working with. And there's so much discomfort around it because um, really noticing how much I have done that in the past um, in certain relationships for sure. So it feels really good and energizing to kind of reclaim some of that. Um, okay, what are my other notes? Oh, meaning. This was another aspect of it is 
as we, as a community, so now we've been together for a while and we're growing and flowing together. I am this year, again, as part of the sabbatical, as part of the rest, as part of the integration, as part of not adding more, 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 but going deeper, I am going to invite everybody, sorry for the (laughs) lawn noise, Um, this is not the normal day and time when they do this, so such is life. Um, I'm going to invite everybody to find a way to use your gifts in service. And so what are the ways in which our community, our healing, growing and flowing serves humanity? How do we serve our communities? How do we serve our families? How do we serve those around us? How do we support our friends and our neighbors? How do we share our art with the world? And this is a really important aspect of integration that we don't just keep it you know, in our own, in our own, like mental psyche, I don't want to say home, because that can be a way of serving, um, especially if you've had a lot of trauma. But, you know, I think, again, just in general, how do we attune, orient ourselves towards service as a path of our community healing and collective care? So those are my main topics for now. Shmita, sabbatical, rest, letting the land rest, letting our bodies rest. Um, what does that look like for you? Making a Shmita list. Um, I was going to show you mine, but like I said, it's over on the altar. Um, in terms of I made art with it and said, here are the things I'm attending to and I'm attuning to this year. Um, being an engaged community. So being a creator, not just a consumer, right? And another really beautiful way to do that is if you are reading something or listening to something, can you also be drawing or dancing or moving? That's how you start to integrate the teachings through you. That's how you start to bring it to life in your own beautiful, unique and dynamic way. And then lastly, on on that note, really looking for micro codependencies. What are the ways you're not saying what it is that you want to say? What is what's underneath it? What needs to be cleared out? Where can you be more powerful in your conversation, more align more connected in your own sense of power and what does that look like for you so may this um, reflection today be of service really to your life to your highest and best to ours as a community and to the world that we long to live and breathe and uh olam haba the world to come the world that we're visioning, the world that we're dreaming of. Um, It's been a really difficult uh, few weeks with weather and war and so much pain. And so how do we transform a pain of the world into micro actions today of service and divinity and sacred ordinary life? This is it. You know, where is that grief and gratitude? How do we hold those together as the lived experience, the multidimensional, paradoxical human experience is right here. It's in the lawn mowing, it's in the podcast recording, it's in the water, it's in the coffee, it's in the light that's coming in on this cloudy day. All of that is part of this beautiful Uh, terrible, wonderful, challenging, difficult, magical, mysterious world that we are in. And may we today in some way find connection to the mystery and may we hold that with the highest and deepest reverence for our whole world.